Okay, so um, welcome to the screencast. Um, let's go look at mousetrap car projects. Um, I need to put a spreadsheet on here so you can upload your projects. Um, let's quickly let's quickly look at the grading rubric. And um, in this screencast, um, I expect to to help you with um, position versus time graph. Um, displacement of the mousetrap car, uh, mass of the mousetrap car, you have to use a force sensor, but the maximum velocity and the kinetic energy of the mousetrap car sh should also be pretty easy from this. Um, acceleration of the mousetrap car during speeding up, uh, acceleration of the mousetrap car while it's slowing down. Um, the force diagram, you'll want to do that on a whiteboard and explain it. So you'll take a picture of it and open it up on a computer and the force diagram is different when you're speeding up versus slowing down. Um, the V Python simulation I'll make another screencast for. Uh, the energy flow diagram you're going to want to do a that on a whiteboard. So the ones I'm going to help you with in this screencast are this one. Uh, let's see where else? This one. This one. And this one. So that's roughly two, four, six, that's roughly eight points, okay? Um, so let's get to it. Um, you're going to want to open Tracker. Tracker is a great piece of software. Um, it's really good at tracking objects. Um, I can't believe how well it tracks objects from the results I've seen so far in class. Um, so I'm going to import uh, LP car, which a student made for me in uh, first period. So video import, and I want to go to the desktop. So users, uh, teacher, desktop, LP car. And right now it's importing. Um, now I'll set up my grid and I'll move my, my grid so that my, it's right on top of the mousetrap car. And then I'll set up a calibration stick. And let's see here. I'll move it right about here. Now I'm just guessing you would have to go out and measure this for your video. Um, that's definitely not 100 meters. Um, maybe about 1.5 meters. Again, that's my guess. Um, now we would create point mass, and at this point these graphs show up over here. Um, I'm going to set up my table the way I want it. Um, I don't want Y. I have no need for the up-down position. As you can see in the right here, the Y value on the screen I have no need for, but I want Tracker to track the X position horizontally across the screen as my car moves. And I'm also going to add their V in the X direction. So the X component, the velocity in that X component should be good here too. And I'll, I'll hit close. And let's see here. Let's see how the auto tracker does. I'll get rid of my grid. I'll zoom in to about 400. Zoom in farther if you want. That looks pretty good. And I will create a new keyframe by hitting Shift and Control. It looks like that'll be good right there. That's definitely part of the mousetrap car. I'll hit, uh, I'll zoom back out so I can check that tracker is tracking well. And I'll hit Start or Search. Um, now it's tracking. And I'm just watching to make sure that it's tracking the mousetrap car. Now, the mousetrap car hasn't started moving yet. Um, that doesn't really bother me. I, I, I know that data isn't going to be useful, but I know it'll, it'll get good data once the car starts moving, and I'll be, that'll be very useful for me. Um, so it's already gone through uh, almost 100 frames already now, uh, tracking the mousetrap car. And the mousetrap car looks like it's moving now, and it tr continues to track it. I should probably look at the, how the template right here is matching. So here's the template I chose, the part of the screen I clicked on, and this is the 
actual mousetrap car. Um, this student has uh, two LP records, and those are the wheels of this car. She was trying to make this this thing go very far, um, and that's that's why that's why her mousetrap car looks like that. You're looking at the side of a record, side of a record, um, LP record, the old kind. Um, says the template is the image to be matched. So that's kind of cool. If you scroll the the mouse over these things, it tells you um, starts with a keyframe and evolves to adapt to shape and color changes. To create a new keyframe, shift control click the video feature of interest. The auto mark level is the minimum match score required for automatic marking. Wow, looks like you can change that too. Um, you can move or resize the template by dragging its edge, and you can adjust the evolution rate and auto mark levels using the spinners. Um, okay, looks like the car has almost gone across, and the tracker is doing a great job of uh, tracking this object as it goes across the screen. Um, it's already gone through several hundred clicks now. It's gone through almost 400 frames right now. That means it's track the object for 400 frames. Um, very nice. Looks like it's almost there. Um, so next I'm going to show you how to copy and paste this this data into Logger Pro um, because for me Tracker is really good at tracking things and it has a lot of really nice advanced features but just for graphing and analyzing data um, I think my students are a lot more comfortable with Logger Pro, so I'm going to have them use that uh, for the graphing and the analysis. Um, but this sure, sure allows us to get good data quickly, um, especially a video that, that has this many frames in it. I mean, this is more than 500 frames. If you had to use Logger Pro's video analysis, you would be clicking more than 500 times, um, which would take you a big chunk of time. Uh, it's almost there. I think somewhere around there the car stops or the video stops one or the other. Um, cool. Looking pretty good. And it's still still doing a great job matching the template as you can see here. Now it looks like it's it's almost done. Wow. Almost 700 frames already. All right, so 626. Um, I'll hit close here. And as soon as that disappears, I'll hit, so this is time, horizontal position, horizontal velocity. So I'll do Apple A. To select my data, Apple C, that's on the Mac. Then I'll open Logger Pro and I'll paste this data in. Okay, and I'll make this bigger. And I should make it even larger. And I will put the data right here Apple V, so shortcut. So I forgot what these were already. <laughs> Time, position, horizontal velocity. So let's label them immediately so I know what it is I'm dealing with. Time, T, seconds, okay. And this was position. Call that X and meters because I used uh, meters as my measurement. And move this over. And I should have a third column here for uh, velocity in the x direction. I'm just going to call that velocity. So I'm not concerned with velocity in the y direction here. So I'll write velocity uh, v meters per second. And it would be nice to also have, so I'll select my graph and I'll do apple c, apple v. So I'll just copy, so I have two graphs, then I'll do apple r to rearrange my screen make it look pretty, and I'll change one of these graphs to uh, velocity. And uh, yeah, that's where Logger Pro is just excellent at being able to make nice graphs quickly. And I can scale this to make it look good. I don't like that. 
I like it about like that. Maybe maybe even before what I had. That's fine. I'm gonna live with it. Um, now I know that if this is constant acceleration, um, I'm guessing that the mouse trap is uh, pulling on her on the axle of her car and making it rotate. And the wheels are the friction between the wheels and the ground are pushing. Uh, that interaction between the wheels and the ground is providing a net force on the car to make it accelerate and that's why we have this top opening parabola right here. I'm going to approximate that and say look that's that's pretty close to a constant acceleration. Now if we have a top opening parabola for position time that means our velocity graph should be linear and if you look at the overall pattern here this this does seem linear, so I'm just going to put a best fit line on it. And that slope, 0.09, let's say, is our acceleration. Okay? So what we're talking about then is an acceleration of 0.09 uh, meters per second faster every second. That's how much the car is speeding up. So it's roughly about a tenth of a meter per second faster each second that this, this car is going. So if I cut this acceleration in half, that should give me my A term in the quadratic equation, okay? So let me just remind you of the physics. Um, our fundamental equation for velocity is written right here. Uh, so velocity equals slope. So I might as well just call it 0 0.09, let's say, 0 0.09 meters per second per second. So that's our acceleration times our time plus our initial velocity here looks like it's negative 0.13 uh, meters per second. So this is the general equation would be V equals A times T plus initial velocity. Okay? And this is a vector equation. So, the general equation for our position when we're accelerating is going to be x equals um, 1 half a c squared plus initial velocity times time plus our initial position. And this too is a vector equation. This is our final position here. So if you look at this term right here, that's our a term in the quadratic equation. The v naught is our b term. And this is our c term at the end, our initial position. So um, let's see how well uh, Lara Pro can approximate this. Um, so for our a term, it looks like it's going to be 1 half of 0 0.09. So I'm going to call that 0 0.045, OK? So I'll highlight this parabola that corresponds to the line below. And I'm going to do analyze model. OK. And I'm going to choose quadratic. And I said the A term would be, should be about 0 0.045. So I'm going to write 0 0.045. Now, I realize my initial velocity should be close to 0. Um, it's not going to be exactly, but I'll make it. I'll make it zero, and let's. Whoops, went too far. Aha! Uh -huh. Try that again. And then I'll shift my initial position. I went too far again. There we go. I'll shift my initial position close to zero. Okay. Okay, and it looks like I'll make my initial velocity negative. Now that's a little too far. So I can change the interval and do fine adjustments by making this 0.01 instead of 0.1. Okay. So I'll make some fine adjustments. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. And if I use my initial velocity here, I got 0.13. So I'll just put that in. And that looks like it fits very nicely. I'll hit OK. So I'm using my initial my initial velocity from here in my acceleration. If 
from here to find my A and my B term. And then all I have to do is modify my C term. Okay? And we'll do the same thing over here. So let me highlight this part, the velocity time graph. So I'm talking about this section here. It looks like the car is gradually slowing down. Okay. And let's see if our velocity time graph has a negative slope like it should. Um, yeah, it's very small. It's a small number. Um, so I'll put this here. And it's fundamentally the same equation. It's still v equals a t plus v naught. Only difference is now we have v equals negative 0 0.007, right? Meters per second per second. So that's seven thousandth of a meter per second slower each second. So that's how much the car's speed is slowing down every second. So it's slowing down seven hundredth of a meter per second. Okay. So if I move the decimal point over, it's it's not even if there's a hundred centimeters in a meter, it's not even a centimeter per second slower every second. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Anyway, um, multiply t and then plus 0.23, let's say, plus 0.23 uh, meters per second. Okay, so that's a pretty good estimate. Um, all right. So let's see here. Um, if I go to the top graph now, I can plug in 0 0.0035. I can take one half of this acceleration. So let's see what we got there. Um, and again, I'll do analyze model. Um, it's already quadratics already selected. Can't forget that my acceleration is now negative, and I want half my acceleration, so I got 0 0.0035. Uh, the next term is my v naught times t term. Okay, so my b term is v naught. Um, I think it's going to be. Well, it says. 0.23 meter per second here. I don't know how close that is, but I'm just going to put that in. Well, that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to shift down a little bit. Yep, that looks pretty nice. And I'll hit OK. All right. So. What I have now is uh, general equations for position and velocity. Um, I have an acceleration for the slowing down period. I have an acceleration for the speeding up period. Um, I can find a total displacement very easily. Um, how I do that is I would just click up here. I think it's a it's an analyze button. So that's right here. And I can just go up to the end. And it looks like I have to move this out of the way so I can see it. Looks like my uh, displacement is around 3.6 meters. Okay. So I can label that here. One, two, three. So this is my displacement, 3.6. Um, I got my displacement. I got my accelerations. Um, my graphs seem to make sense because as my slope gets steeper, as the slope gets steeper, my car is, her car is speeding up. And in the second period of time, the graph seems like it gets less steep gradually because the car is slowing down. So anyway, um, those are the basics.
I'm just going to go back to the website real quick and make sure that I've covered everything. Um, we talked about position time graph, which we created. We talked about, okay, we didn't do maximum velocity. So let's try to figure that out right now. Um, it looks like the maximum velocity, you could always use, use one of these equations. Um, I think the easiest would just be to use your velocity graph. Um, the maximum velocity looks like it happens here. Uh, why don't I do this? I'll highlight the entire graph for velocity and I'll do statistics. So the statistics for the entire graph, maybe I'll put it down here. Um, the maximum value should be my maximum velocity. See, I don't want to hide my data, so I'm going to put it like maybe over here somewhere. Hmm. Let's spread these out a little bit. So I'll put this one here. There we go. Now I'll put grab this one and move this one over here. Move the statistics to the left a little bit. Just try to spread things out and not block my data or my equations. Um, from the statistics, it looks like my maximum speed, my maximum velocity, turns out to be one point, about a meter per second. Okay, I'm looking right here. So if my maximum velocity is one meter per second, then I can use that value to figure out my maximum kinetic energy. And you can compare that in your energy flow diagram with the energy stored in the spring that you calculated before and uh, see how much energy was lost or dissipated that didn't actually make it to the motion of the car. Um, and it should be a pretty nice project. Um, hope you enjoy it and uh, have a good day.